you know, Joaquin Gonzalez, who's always the guy I kind of looked up to um, the whole time I was there. And he wanted to carry Coach Coker onto the field. And so we get to the last play of the game, and he puts me in for his spot um, to go in for the kneel down. And so that was really cool for me, you know, as a, as a redshirt freshman to get in and go be a part of that. And, um, you know, but, but again, the guys that are, you know, the guys that are guys that went on to have NFL hall of fame careers and everything, you know, they, they celebrated with, with everybody that was on the team, you know, no matter who they were. And, um, you know, everybody kind of got treated equal and it was a brotherhood and, you know, that's, we wanted to win for each other and and that's what we were going to do. Awesome, man. I, so I, I remember my question now. It's um, so so we we hear a lot about this 2001 team or even even the 2000 or 2002 teams. Um, we hear so much from, you know, former players and all the Hall of Famers and greats that were on that team. Uh, is there anything that you can tell us that maybe we don't know that isn't common knowledge? Um, you know, just something from the inside, even if it's a small detail, just something that resonated with you. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, um, you know, I mean, a lot of great stories, um, you know, like, I think that the hard work we put in the summer and I know Andrew Swayze's at FIU now, but I mean, he was kind of the unsung hero of everything because, you know, we talk about Dorsey and and Ed Reed. I think a lot of times they took their cues from our strength coach, uh, Andrew Swayze. And, you know, he would kind of shape the message, you know, and, and I think that was a big thing um, on that side of things. Um, so I'll tell you this story because I kind of I'm, I'm I don't know if I mentioned it or not on, on Twitter one time you were tweeting something, but um, Willis McGahee. So Willis was the best at everything he did. And he lived on my floor my freshman year. And I remember that you know, he would walk into my room and never have played the video game I was playing and he would get on the sticks and beat me. And so like, I pretended like somebody stole one of my controllers so that I didn't have to play him if I knew he was coming. Um, but you know, he and I were kind of close and that 2002 season, the first game he started, um, he borrowed my sandals to go use the bathroom before the game. And he did the second game, the third game. So he did it all season. And it was kind of like his pregame ritual. And so we get to the Fiesta Bowl and Coach Coker asked us to dress up that game. And so we get to the locker room and he comes to me to get the sandals. And I didn't have the sandals. And just the look on his face like, Coons, you didn't bring the sandals to the national championship game. You know, that was something that always stuck with me. And then the knee injury happened. Things just didn't go the way we wanted to. Everything was just kind of crazy. Um, so that that was probably something that, like, man, you know, you don't know if stuff like that happens, but, you know, it's it's not always something I like talking about, but, you know, we're, we're past that far enough. And, you know, Willis and I have joked about it a few times since then. So. And, and, I, and I was going to uh, – I, I, I don't want to ask about that Fiesta Bowl, but I, I kind of just feel the obligation to. I mean yeah. – just talk about that game because I remember um, – I mean I went to the the Florida State game earlier that year, but that Fiesta Bowl is the first game I really remember watching with my father. Um, I was living in Hollywood, Florida, and I he, I he had to – I was like seven years old. He had to carry me to my room because I was just bawling hysterical. Just, just talk about that game a little bit. Well, you know, we came out the first half, and, you know, the, the funny thing about it is – that was the most focused week of practice or anything we had done as a team. Um, you know, guys that maybe even when we were, we were at the Rose bowl that went out and like, you know, had a good time at night before curfew during that week, you know, they were staying home and being focused the entire time. So, um, you know, we were all fired up and ready to go and we kind of came out flat and, you know, after a whole season of not giving up a sack the entire time, um, you know, we we uh, we gave up one early in the game and, you know, things just weren't going the way we wanted to. You know, there was a there was a ball tip that got intercepted and, um, you know, 
for some reason we couldn't tackle Maurice Claret. And, you know, all of a sudden we're at halftime, not in the position we thought we would be in. So second half comes out and, you know, we, we end up, I think it was like, it was 14 to 17. Roscoe Parrish makes a big return, gets us in field goal position. Um, you know, and that was my job that year. I was on field goal PAT. And so I, we, we kicked a field goal with, with uh, three seconds left. Todd Seaver makes it, sends us to overtime. Um, that was probably the most nervous moment of my life personally, because I was like nervous shaking and I was like almost asking to get taken out because I was afraid I was going to jump off sides. Um, you know, and, and to me, I look back at that moment. It could have been an easily a Chris Weber moment. You know, imagine <laughs> if, if I jumped off sides and we had to move the ball back five yards and missed that game timing field goal, yeah. you know, then, then there is no bad pass interference call. And, you know, it, it's, a uh, it's me getting probably killed by some, uh, guys that had money on the game or something, but anyway, <laughs> Um, at least, at least get from death threats, but, you know, we made that field goal. We went into overtime, we came down and scored, um, you know, and, and then we stopped them and we all celebrated, you know, and just like it says in the, the U part two, you know, I also remember Sean Taylor just throwing his helmet up as high as he possibly could and it landed on the ground and, and all the pieces falling out of it. And, you know, us running on the field and like doing slides on the field and everything and and then we had to go back and play more game you know um obviously that was probably the worst call in in uh in football history um you know and it's it's it stinks that that's what our legacy for that year is you know not having willis after the injury and um you know it, it's uh it's it's something that it still hurts it's still something you think about and you still get angry about um, even this far away from it, you know, but I mean, if we, if we don't have, if we don't, if we don't have that call and we, and we get a couple extra BCS points that 2000 season, I mean, we could be a three-time national champion team instead of a one, you know? Yeah. I mean, you guys were obviously the best team in all three of those seasons. This is my last question. Um, Jordan probably has one last one. Okay. I'm going to end my questioning on a happy note. 2001, Joe Campbell Stadium, halftime, FSU, Ed Reed, I'm hurt dog. What Were you there for that, like, or did you have to go um, on the field early for field goal practice? Um, no. So that was that was my redshirt freshman year. So I was I was not traveling at that time. Um, okay. I didn't travel that game. So, you know, that's the one, that's the one game I wish I was there for because I would have loved to have been there in that moment. But, you know, we were – we were going into that game and they had won like 50 straight or, or 40, 54, 54. Yeah, 54 straight. So they were, they were threatening our streak and, you know, we wanted to leave there just decimating them. And that was kind of the goal. And, you know, we, we had a good first half, we were beating them and, and, you know, Ed's shoulder was bothering them. And he's, he's like, yeah, I'm hurt, but we're going to put the gas to the pedal. Basically what he was saying is, you know, we're going to, we're going to keep pounding it and pouring it on them and, and leave them a game to remember. And, you know, and we did, and it was a, it was a great game for us. And, you know, it was, like I said, I wish, I, I wish that's one that I wish I, I could have been at. I, I, I got to travel, you know, my sophomore, junior and senior year, but um, that was one I didn't get to go to, but, you know, it was definitely, definitely one of the bigger games of the year. Cause it, it just kind of set us up as, yeah, this is who we are. We're coming and, you know, if you want some, come get some. That's badass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my so here's my last question. Um, you're you're in a very like you're in a very small group of people that have been a part of of the greatest team in their respective sport. Um, you know, I I I do not entertain any arguments against that team being the best college football team of all time. Uh, so what I want to know is how did being in such an elite group of guys, how has that changed your life since then? Wow. I mean, that, that's a, I mean, as much as anything else, you know, as much as the recognition, anything, the lessons that I learned from those guys 
as I worked alongside of them in the weight room and, and, you know, at practice and in games and all that, like that is what really has changed my life. Cause being a part of, you know, those guys lives and us all doing the things we had to do to get that to that point. That's truly what you take away from it. You know, it, it gives you, it gives you a little bit of a cloud, a little bit of credibility, the fact that you were on that team, but it's like, not only was I on that team, but, you know, if anything else, just an education on how to be the best is what I take from that, you know, and, and the sacrifice, the demand, um, you know, guys like, like Brett Romberg or, or, uh, you know, Joaquin Gonzalez and sitting in a room with them every day and Brian McKinney and, you know, Chris Myers, Vernon Carey, all those guys. Eric Winston, um, you learn from those guys and you, you see, you know, you see what makes them great and, you know, you see them change over time. I mean, there are guys that came in that you're like, oh, that guy's not, you know, he's not going to cut it because he's not, you know, falling in line with us. But then you see them fall in line and all of a sudden they're great, you know. And so um, that's the big thing for me, the big takeaway, you know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, for me, it was kind of, uh, and I think this is, this is everywhere, but when, when guys go on to the NFL, there's a time period where they're thinking that everybody wants something from them, you know? And so you lose a little bit of, of connection with some of those guys for a little bit, but then there's a sentimentalness that kind of sets in and all of a sudden you have group chats with these guys and you have, you know, Facebook, you know, groups and everything with them and, and you start talking about the old times and, and you see that they're still doing great things. And that's kind of the takeaway, the friendship and the, the, uh, the lessons you learn. That, I mean, <clears throat> like I said, man, like Jordan and I were both diehard hurricanes. I, I bleed orange and green. Like this is what I love. <laughs> I love talking to former hurricanes and because you guys did absolutely, you guys had a different mentality than all of college football, and, and we just want to see that mentality and that winning mindset return to Miami. But, Brad, thank you so, so much for coming on. We would love to have you on again and tell some more stories because, I mean, I got hundreds of, of questions for you. But thank you again, brother, and, and hope everything is going well you know, with you and your life, and um, thank you for being a hurricane. Hey, I appreciate it, man. It was, it was the greatest greatest time I could have had, and – uh you know, I appreciate you guys and, and, you know, we're going to get back on track. There's a lot of good things going on and, um, you know, I, I love, I love what they're doing. So. Hell yeah. Well, thanks Brad. And, and uh, as right. always go Canes, man. Go Canes, baby. That was amazing, man. <laughs> when I asked that last question, like it just kind of clicked in my head, like, that that like Brad was on a team that their contemporaries are like the 72 Dolphins and the 96 Bulls and yeah. it, that like gave me chills just thinking about it man like I I I can't imagine I can't imagine being a part of something like that when you can look back and you're like like I am on the same you know I was a part of something that was as great as Michael Jordan at his peak or at, you know, the greatest NFL season of all time. I mean, like, college football is, you know, it's, it's a huge deal. And so to be a part of the greatest college football team of all time, that's it's just mind-boggling to think, man. That, what a great way to end this week. I mean, yeah. that was on, this has honestly been one of my favorite episodes. Like, going from Cam, who, like, like he just is so – he just knows so much about the Hurricanes and then going to someone like Brad who actually played on those teams like like I, I I usually have so much to say. But like right now, I'm just like I'm very happy with this episode. And yeah. I, I don't know. I'm like this. Yeah. What, it's one of those episodes where you're just like, damn, like I, I'm happy. Like I'm, I'm really, really happy about this episode. Dude, that the the story that he shared with us about Willis McGahee and, and the sandals, man, that like. I that that kind of hit me, especially as you know he said that he doesn't really like talking about it. That 
Man, I feel for him. So I, I really appreciate, you know, Brad, when you listen, I, 